Lil Baby is one of the hottest artists in the game. But before he hopped in the booth, he was really active in the streets of Atlanta. And a lot of his homies still got both feet in the trenches. Today, we're breaking down the wild story of his brother, Lil Steve, aka G5, who went from breaking into over 100 cars to fighting a crazy murder case. Let's get right to it. Lil Baby's one of the biggest rappers in the game right now, but his brother Lil Steve was actually famous before him. Baby blew up back in 2017 after his mixtape Perfect Timing dropped, but Steve was making headlines three years before that in 2014. In June 2014, Lil Steve got out of jail and was given 20 to 30 years of probation. Releasing him turned out to be a bad idea for the Atlanta police though, because Steve pretty much started a crime wave all by himself. A month after he got out, Steve made headlines breaking into over 100 cars and hotel parking lots. When the news broke, he already had 24 warrants out, but the cops accused him of breaking into 118 whips. According to them, Steve was running around breaking into cars, stealing GPS devices, phones, and laptops. But the biggest thing he was snatching was guns, which made the cops and everyone else even more nervous. People in the neighborhood was worried about getting robbed, and the cops told them to stop leaving anything valuable in their whips because they couldn't catch Lil Steve. They had surveillance photos of him robbing cars at the Motel 6, but a local news station interviewed Steve's grandma, and she told him he might have done something, but no, not that many. Breaking into over 100 cars in under a month is wild, but in 2018, Steve got caught up in an even crazier case. By 2018, Lil Baby was already one of the hottest new rappers in the game. His debut album dropped in May and hit number three on the Billboard 200. And in October, he released a collab tape with Gunna and earned a Grammy nomination for the track Drip Harder. But while he was popping off in the industry, his little brother was getting wrapped up in murder cases. On November 30th, 2018, the police found two men who got robbed and shot at a Waffle House parking lot in Brookhaven. Nobody knew it went down, but one of the dudes was pronounced dead at the scene while the other was taken to the hospital for treatment. A few days later, the cops arrested a dude named Pierre Gregory Singletary for the shooting. It looked like a simple case at first, but come to find out, Singletary was actually the victim. On December 11th, the cops booked Steve and a dude named Quintez Griffin on felony murder, aggravated assault, armed robbery, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Turns out, the shooting ain't even go down at the Waffle House. Roderick Francois survived the shooting, and he told the cops it happened at an apartment complex down the road where Pierre Singletary lived. Francois said he went to Pierre's place with his homie Carthel Johnson to buy weed. While they was there, two dudes rushed in and tried to rob him. That's when the shots started going off, and Francois and Johnson both got hit. Francois carried his homie to the whip and drove to the Waffle House for help. But unfortunately, Johnson was already dead by the time police got there. Lil Steve and his homie Griffin were charged for killing Johnson. What's wild about the situation is that just a few months earlier, Lil Baby posted a pic with Steve on Facebook and captioned it with, G5 out the can, give him 100 bands. Even if Baby didn't really hand over 100 racks, he was already big enough to take care of his bro Steve without having to crash out over little weed deals. But you never know what's really going on behind the scenes. And obviously, the cops thought they had enough evidence to take him down over the robbery and killing. Steve and Griffin sat in jail while they waited for the trial to start. But the situation with the state's case against them was a hot mess. There was a lot of issues getting a trial date that both sides could agree on. And at one point, the state basically wanted to let Steve and Griffin go until they can get more evidence to convict them. But the judge wasn't rocking with the idea. By that point, they had been sitting in jail for over a year. The trial was finally set to begin on January 7, 2020. But a few weeks before it was about to start, the prosecution tried to delay it again because they couldn't find the two witnesses they wanted to bring in to testify. The judge on the case aired out the prosecutors and said the state attempted to conceal its many failures by filing motions to delay the trial without evidence. She blocked their attempt to stop the trial and it started on January 7, 2020. This is where the case got even weirder. When the trial started, the prosecution wouldn't help pick the jury, declare their opening argument, or call any witnesses. Instead, they tried to convince the judge to dismiss the charges against Stephen Griffin so they could try him again at a different time, but the judge denied the motion. The defense picked the jury and everybody was ready to go, but the prosecution basically just refused to take part in the trial at all. So Stephen Griffin's lawyers asked the judge to acquit him on the charges since the state wouldn't prosecute, and the judge agreed to let him go. The judge said, the state takes the position these defendants are dangerous to the community, but if so, it was the state which failed the community by failing to present any case at all for their conviction. Beating the murder charge was a huge win for Lil Steve, and he celebrated with the first day out track where he rapped, caught you lacking, pulled up with that f***ing semi, made it happen, 500 just to prove I ain't did it, and they was hating on us. Baby came and scooped me in the f***ing Rolls truck, a vendor behind me with the f***ing doors up. The good times ain't last long though and Steve ended up getting booked again in 2020. 
But somehow, he got released again by mistake. And Steve spent the next few months hiding out. When the cops finally tracked him down, they found him in a penthouse apartment with drugs, 20K in cash, and 11K in sneakers. Steve was curled up under the bed, but he came out and surrendered. He's back on the streets again, and now the situation's getting even messier. A few months ago, young thug's homie, Rue, accused Steve of snitching on him. Rue even posted paperwork that allegedly proved Steve flipped on him, and he claims that Steve changed his name to G5 to avoid being labeled as a rap. Steve hasn't commented on the situation, but lately, he ain't been seen with Lil Baby like he used to. Everyone knows that Thug and Lil Baby are tight, but Thug's homie calling this bro a snitch pretty serious. Right now, Thug's too busy dealing with his own Rico trial to worry about Rue and Steve's issues, but Baby hasn't said anything about it either. Rumors say that Georgia might be going after 4PF for Rico charges next, so Baby might just be trying to keep his distance from a dude who barely beat a murder charge. There's a lot going on with Atlanta right now. YF and Lucci and his crew are tied up in a Rico case, and Young Thug's trial is set to begin next month. If rumors are true, Baby and 4PF might already be under investigation. Nobody knows how all this is going to play out, so tap in for updates while the stories develop.